Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going to create a shadow box which is perfect for spring. I'm going to play with products from my latest release for Spellbinders which is called Bird Houses Through the Seasons and I'm going to play with loads and loads of mixed media techniques. You can easily follow the same design to make a card, you can even work on your art journal book. I decided to work on a loose paper and this is watercolor paper just because I want to frame it and decorate my walls. Now the paper I'm working on is about 6.5 by 6.5 and, and that's because I want to frame it inside that wooden panel. There are shadow boxes available like this one with glass at the front if you want to avoid any dust but I kind of like to avoid that glare of the glass on top of my project so I prefer using those wooden uh, panels. For today's project I'm revisiting a favorite mixed media technique where I'm using older pattern paper, cutting it out into different pieces and putting everything together for my background. This technique is going to give you lots of texture and at the same time you can use up pattern paper that you have been hoarding for ages. I had this from Prima and I think it is more than uh, 5 years old. So anyway, I just picked up a couple of pattern papers that are quite pale. Their design isn't too busy and that's exactly what I was going for. And all I'm doing is cutting that out into little pieces. Notice that I'm not measuring anything, I'm just eyeballing the different pieces. Some are squares, some are thinner, bigger, smaller. I just make sure that they are all rectangles. Now it is time to put everything together. I'm working with my matte medium here and I'm going to stick everything down. I'm using a generous amount of matte medium on my watercolor paper, then I apply the little piece on top and then I go over it again with my matte medium just to make sure that they are going to stay in place. As I stick them down, I make sure that I overlap the edges. This way I will end up having lots of texture at the end. Make sure that you don't stick them next to each other, overlap them. It really makes a big difference. Also, I don't care if some of the pieces go outside of my watercolor paper, I can always use my scissors at the end and cut out any excess. This technique is great as a warm-up exercise as you do this repetitive work. It is something relaxing, it clears your mind and all kind of creative ideas come to me when I do that. Once I covered the whole panel, I'm using my heat gun to make sure that everything is completely dry and then I will use my scissors to cut off the excess. Of course, you can use your paper trimmer in this stage. I just need to make sure that this is nice and tidy all around since I am going to frame it. For my next step, I'm going to use some gesso, and this is thick gesso. I'm going to add some brush strokes along the project. I like to have some lighter areas at the background. I also love those brush strokes, and at the same time, it works as an eraser. If you find that in an area the pattern paper is too busy, you can always go over it with gesso. Here is a close up of how my background is looking at the moment, and hopefully, you can see all the texture that I got from the tiling. A go-to technique for me is to do some stamping on my backgrounds. Here I'm using a text stamp from the Etc. collection by uh, Tim Holtz. This is one stamp that I keep on using again and again for years now. I am going with archival link which is permanent and the color is sepia. I know that I will be using uh, browns on my project so I know that this is going to blend nicely with the rest of the elements. Another favorite technique and one of my go-to is to add a little bit of modeling paste through a stencil. In this case, again, I'm using a stencil with a text on top. I'm not even sure where I got this, this stencil, sorry about that. I just found it in my stash and I thought that it would be perfect for using this on the project. Now, I'm going with a thick modeling paste and then I'm going to apply it in different areas, making sure that I don't create perfect rectangles. I just want it to look organic. And finally, I'm going to add some color. For that, I'm using a Distress Oxide Sprays. The colors are Speckled Egg, which is the lighter blue, Tumbled Glass, which is the darker one, and finally, a touch of brown, which is Gathered Twigs. Now, I don't want to overwhelm my project, my background, with color. That's why I added the color with a touch of water on a palette, and I'm applying it with a brush. This way I have more control of uh, how much uh, paint I'm adding on my background. And although I started it with speckled eggs, I thought it was too pale. That's why I moved on quickly 
into using my tumbled glass. I help the color to move around with water, I even spray on top of it. You will see that the color is going along the lines of the tiles. It's going in between the nooks and crannies of the stenciling we did with the modeling paste. And this really helps to bring that texture into life. Also keep in mind that I am using Distress Oxide Sprays, which is going to dry even lighter than you see the color now, so always keep that in mind. If I was going with sprays from the Dilutions line, for example, I would know that they would stay as bright as you see them. I'm happy with the first layer of color. I will go with my heat tool, make sure that the first layer is completely dry. And I'm going to add even more bluish color. Now this is where I'm getting quite brave. I'm spraying directly on the project with tumbled glass. And again with water, I'm going to let it drip. And I'm using a brush to add some white splashes, just because I cannot stay away from them. This is white gesso thinned down with water. For now, I'm happy with the background, and uh, here is a close-up look. Hopefully the camera picks up all the texture that I have from the tiling of the pattern paper, as well as the stenciling. So I'm going to leave that aside, and I will start working on my focal points. Now I'm planning to use the dies to cut out different elements such as the leaves, the birdhouse as well as the branches. For that I'm going to use my sprays and create my very own colored paper. You can always cut out the elements from white cardstock and use your markers or any other coloring medium to add color to those pieces. You can even use colored cardstock, but I don't like how flat this would look. So for my project today, and since I'm playing with mixed media, I do create my own pattern paper. Here, for example, I just mixed up two shades of green and I end up with that uh, multicolored cardstock that I can use to cut out all the leaves. I even added some water splashes here and I'm lifting some color just to make it more interesting and not so flat. This is going to make a huge difference when I go and cut out the leaves from there. I'm also going to do some stamping again using the same text stamp and the same sepia color as the background. And on the finished project you will be able to see on the leaves all those details that I'm adding now. So here is my spring set and I'm going to use the birdhouse from this one as well as the three little flowers. And there are also leaves included in this set that you can use if you want to cut out these ones. I'm also going to bring in one more set from my designs and these are the birdies. This one includes the branch which I absolutely adore. I'm going to embellish it with the leaves. There are four leaves in this set which makes it easy to cut out multiple leaves with one passing. And I'm going to bring in one more leaf from the fall set, just because it is bigger, and I want to combine smaller and bigger leaves to give more interest on my project. Now, in the same way that I created my green pattern paper, I did create that brown one, so I just uh, combined a couple of brown sprays there. So I'll use the brown one to cut out the branch, as well as the white to cut out the leaves. I have a couple of branches and I am keeping these papers that I created. I can always use them to cut out other elements later on. Here are my flowers, my leaves, and you can see that the leaves don't look flat at all. For my birdhouse, I'm using textured cardstock. This has a good grain design on top of that. I did place the circle die at the center of the birdhouse, so I will end up having a circle window. And I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. The project that I'm making today is super fun to recreate and I think it is a great home decor for a kid's bedroom as well. So anyway, I did cut out the top of the house one more time from that brown cardstock that I created and it is designed in such a way to make it super easy for you to separate the roof. And I'm also going to bring in the other piece and this is just the bottom of the house. Again, very easy to separate that branch. These are pieces that I will use on top of my actual birdhouse to give it more dimension. I'm going to ink up the birdhouse mainly with brown, having a darker brown at uh, the edges and lighter one at the center. I actually went with uh, antique linen at the center and vintage photo on the edges, but you can have your birdhouse any color that you want. You can even use pattern paper to cut out your house. And it would look great to cut it out from pattern paper that has wood planks on top with that built paint design. It would look stunning. 
At the back of my birdhouse I'm adding some foam tape and then I'm going to stick there a scrap piece of brown cardstock. This way I will cover up the back of all those holes and at the same time it gets more dimensional. Now I'm going to stick on top all the extra bits and pieces such as that branch at the bottom and the roof. For that I am using foam tape so that I can uh, have some extra dimension. Remember this is a shadow book so I can go as uh, dimensional as I want to. But if you are recreating this for the pages of your art journal, just don't use foam tape. I'm using a piece of twine so that I can have the birdhouse hanging from my branch. And I'm going to use white glue at the back of the branch to stick it down. With a piece of tape I'm going to secure the twine, just making sure that it looks nice and straight. I will cut off the excess and of course I'm going to cover up this completely when I stick the house on top. I did add foam tape at the back with a little bit of a channel at the middle so that the twine fits in between and I definitely wasn't shy with uh, dimension. I did add uh, two layers of foam tape back there so that I have enough dimension. And now it's time to bring those branches into life. Since this is a spring scene I'm going to add the leaves that I created previously. I'm going to mix smaller and bigger leaves and um, I'm adding a kind of a curve with my fingers on the leaves so that they stay dimensional, adding a dot of glue only at the base of the leaf. You can recreate this kind of idea for any of the seasons. So for example, if it is fall, you can color your leaves differently. If it's winter, don't use leaves at all and add some snow on top of the branches and have a snow at the background. I think that it is really versatile this branch and can be used throughout the year. And you cannot have a spring uh, scene without some flowers, so I'm going to create a few here. I am adding just a touch of uh, yellow at the center of the flowers, and I'm going to give them some curve using the tool here. If you noticed, I did cut out two branches. I used the first one as a whole, as it is, and at the top I do have a part of the second branch, just to make it look richer. And at the end of the video you will see that I'm going to use the leftover of the second branch as well. Time to stick the flowers down. I'm just picking uh, three different spots. You can add as many flowers as you like. Usually on my projects I don't like to add too many colors as it makes it look very busy. That's why in this project I'm mainly staying with yellows, greens, the blue on the background and of course the brown which is quite neutral. When you cut out the flowers you will end up with a tiny little circle that you can use as the center of your flower. However, in this case I'm using those tiny little pearls which I have from Dress My Craft and I think they are the perfect dimensional center for mini flowers. Now at this stage I feel like my birdhouse is so clean, everything has more texture and stamping. That's why I will add a touch of stamping with the same stamp and sepia color as I did on the background and on the leaves. And it's time to put my bird together. I used a die from my bird set, the one little bird that looks as if it is flying. It gives you two pieces when you cut it out, one wing as well as the main body. You just supposed to stick the wing on top of the main body and you are good to go. I did want to have more dimension, that's why I cut out more layers. For the bird I didn't use my yellow sprays to create my own colored cardstock. But once I put it together I'm going to make sure to ink it up with and blend it out a little bit so that it doesn't look so flat and so clean. You always need to have the same look and feel on all the elements, which is a detail that helps them come together in a project. And here it is flying away from the birdhouse. For my quote I'm going to use one of the sentiments from my sentiment clear stamp set and this is called Tweet Sentiments. If this is a card design you can just stamp it on your background and you're good to go. If this is a smaller ATC card or maybe an art journal like 6x6 you can also stamp it directly. Since I need to cover up more real estate here, this is going to end up on an 8x8 frame. I am going to combine the actual uh, quote with uh, bigger dies. So uh, I'm going with a quote that says spread your wings and fly. I used Versamark to stamp it on black cardstock and I'm going to hit set it. That quote was a combination of typed font along with 101. So cut out in smaller pieces the words that were typed and for the 100 words which were fly and wings I'm going to use a big alphabet die. 
This is the Retro Alphabet Die by Waffle Flower and it is lately one of my favorite alphabets. I keep on using it again and again. I play around a little bit with the placement of the alphabet and then stick everything down. And now here is the leftover branch from the one that I used at the top. I'm going to use it on the other side of my panel just to add an element there as it looks quite empty. And again I'm going to add leaves. I do have that uh, green cardstock that I created in the beginning so I can cut out as many leaves as I need to. Now I was about to call that done but every time I was going back to it I added more and more details. This is when I don't know where to stop. So here I'm adding my white gel pen. I cannot stay away from uh, highlighting little elements. I absolutely love the whimsical look and feel that it gives. So I'm adding some uh, lines on the leaves, on the bird, on the birdhouse, the branches, pretty much everywhere, even on the letters. Remember that when you are creating your projects, it's all about having fun. There is no right or wrong, just do whatever makes you happy. And white highlights do make me happy. Now, for the frame I was debating whether I want to color it completely white with a white gesso for example, but I decided to tint it and make it browner just a little bit so it fits better with the neutral colors on my project. I do have matte medium, heavy matte medium at the back, I'm going to stick it down. And this is where I realized that I wanted to add something extra on the birdhouse. I went with a little flower and a few leaves. I think it looks more balanced now and it actually creates a triangle of that green color. And probably that's why it's more pleasing to the eye. So that was the mixed media shadow books for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Down below you will find a list of all the products that I used to create my project. I am planning to share even more ideas using my new collection with Spellbinders. Here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and also to like the video, it really helps. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.